Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner and welcome to Real Magic Review, where I've been spending a large proportion of my time sifting through the near endless barrage of magic releases in order to bring you the good stuff, like some sort of snuffling magical truffle pig. This week we've got Jason Adani's Game Changer. So before we carry on the usual messages, please like and subscribe and click the little bell so you get notifications of these reviews. Uh, the next thing is go and have a look at my Car Magic course. Don't know if I mentioned it before, Car Magic course is my online course uh, and community where we all help each other become the best magicians we can. Over 180 videos, I'm putting videos on every week uh, with new courses going on, answers to questions. So, so it's becoming something very, very special. So uh, head on over to carmagiccourse.com and you can get your free spread cull download at carmagiccourse.com forward slash cull. Uh, so let's get on with the review of this book. So this is Jason's second book release from Vanishing. The first was Confident Deceptions, which was very well received, loads of really strong effects um, and a great book. So there is always a feeling when a strong book comes out and when the second book comes out relatively quickly, I mean, it's not straight away, but it kind of felt like Confident Deceptions doesn't feel like an old book. Uh, you worry about that sort of second album syndrome. Is it going to be the filler that didn't go in the first book? Uh, it follows, uh, and we'll, we'll go into that in a minute, it follows the same format where we've got the first part is, is magic effects, the second part gambling effects, but in this the ratio is a, bit, is a bit more split. In the first book it was mostly magic effects and a few gambling effects at the end. And in this book I think we've got eight uh, magic effects and ten gambling routines. I might have that the wrong way around, uh, I'm not going to spend more time looking at it now, but no, I'm, I'm pretty sure I have. But all you need to know is it's pretty much split down the middle. Um, other than that, you know, Vanishing Inc. know how to put a magic book together. Andy and Josh are magic book people, so they know that when you get a book, you want it to feel substantial, you want it to look good and feel good, and that's very important if you're going to be spending hours with a book, which you are going to be, and I think you very well might be with this one. The, the photos are stunning, 255, I think, photos in here, all taken with precision, and to aid, as Jason says, to aid your learning, and it does aid your learning, you know, you can see really clearly where the hands are, that they've been taken with, with purpose, these photos, it's not just a load of glossy photos to make it look good. Um, and the other difference, oh, you see, the other difference is that Jason's got a bit of company this time, um, and he's having a nice time in there, and it's all, it's all kind of got this feel of this gambling room, you know, having a cigar, kind of having a whiskey kind of thing that we're kind of seeing quite often now, but I like it. I, lo I like, I like the, the feeling it, it, it sort of conjures up. That's not, a, that's a really bad gag if it was maybe it wasn't. Um, so that's your first impressions. That's what you're going to get. So Jason is a student and has been a student for many years of Darwin Autos, and you can tell, you feel like you're reading a Darwin Autos book, and that isn't taken away from the re originality of it. I'm just saying that it kind of has that, so even to the pinky count bit at the beginning, um, it has the feel that you're, you're reading something that comes from at some point uh, through Darwin or Tears. Now, I'm, not re I'm really not saying that to, to put the book down. I'm saying that as a positive thing because there isn't a card magician in the world that won't say that Darwin or Tears publications are incredibly important. They're just full um, of strong magic. Um, and, and this one is too. And, and that's why it's a compliment. You know, they're, when you read Darwin's books, everything has a reason and everything seems to have a reason for this. And importantly, the plots are very simple. You know, you're not reading them going, hang on, what, what's going to happen? And it, it's a very clear read, very clearly um, described and, and with the photos that really helps, but also in plot. You know, you, I don't know about you, but when I, when I the, the hardest thing about learning routines for me is remembering them. You know, it's not the actual slides. I've kind of got most of the slides down now, but it's actually how do you remember the format and the... And the, the the journey of the routine. And I and I find that with this and with, with Darwin or Tiz books, there's so much logic to the routine. There's no kind of finickety faff in there. So I find them easy to remember. So when I read the routines a few times and go back to them, there's a logic to it. Therefore, they're easy to remember. And because of that, you kind of, they do flow. They have a beginning, a middle and an end. So Jason does not shy away from a challenge. Loads of these routines have this this sort of challenge plot of either the magician challenging himself, I bet I can't do this in a certain amount of time, or a challenge between the magician and spectator where the magician wins. Now, there is a school of thought that says this is really bad and there's those people that say you should never make people look stupid. And of course you shouldn't make people look stupid, but I, I've seen it so many times where there can be a real fun kind of banter thing between you and the spectator where you're having a little competition and they know that you're gonna win it, right? They're kind of, it's kind of a theater. Okay, it's not putting somebody down. If done well, and I have seen it done awfully, where people do 
feel really small and the magician's the cocky one. And it's kind of that Jerry Seinfeld thing of saying, is that your card? Yes, you're an idiot. You know, it's, it, there's a lot of that superiority happens in magic, which I hate. But this clearly, when you read this, doesn't come from that place. That everything is there for entertainment value. And if you watch Jason, you know he's got that charm. He can get away with it. Not all of us can, but when we do, it works really well. So don't worry about that. When he talks about those challenges, you know, if you've got a problem with it, change your scripting, change your routine. You don't have to do things that way, but just know that there's a lot of that going on, which is probably why it's called game changing, because there's a lot of sort of, it, it feels like a game, a lot of this stuff. So it's really, really hard for me to find the favorite routines in this, because there's so many of them, and they're all, you know, you read through this. If you've got this book and read through it without cards in hand, you'd, be, you'd, you'd see the quality in all of these routines. Because um, Jason is someone, like you said, in the trailer for this, he's, this is stuff that is from his close up. Um, act and yeah you kind of don't believe that a lot of the time but actually there's clips of him storming with these tricks in a close up situation so you kind of believe it uh, in, in this context um, but favourites I think I'm reading it are Anniv um, Game Changer and I nearly said Anniversary Waltz there because um, in my notes I've got that it's got a similar concept to Anniversary Waltz but with a completely different plot and really unexpected plot and as a magician if you saw it you wouldn't be expecting what was going to happen and it's again it's a challenge trick between you and the spectator and they feel like they've won but they genuinely do because there's no other way to go with it and then then you reveal that you've won the challenge um this catch me if you can which is a really clever idea where you have three mini games with the spectator and there's a card to and and, and you win uh, each one and there's a but there's a genuine feeling of challenge in that uh, and fun which is important thing um and that's that's, that's the point right uh, and the last, what happens at the end is a card to wallet, but again, really unexpected, really different. Uh, Nick of Time is this nice timed routine where they can be holding their phone and you can see the time going down on their phone and you're trying to find four selections and four of a kind and you, again, it looks like you fail uh, and the cards end up under the phone in their hand. But my favourite, oh, the, the triumph thing is brilliant because there's a triumph in it where you genuinely do mix the cards face up and face down. Um, so not in a cull way, you know, the Costa Kimlap thing where you do mix them up and have to cull them. It's a different thing uh, from that. But again, really, really nice version of Triumph. And we all know there's hundreds of Triumphs out there and some of them are not improvements at all. But this is a really nice, different way of doing it. Uh, but my favourite, without a doubt, is is this Lucky Charm trick, which is you, if you've seen, um, I've got to say Die Vernon then, it's, uh, Darwin, Darwin Ortiz, Darwin. Darwin Ortiz's is dream card, where it's a card to wallet, but the card that they've signed actually ends up with a different color back, which is just, I mean, think about that. That's amazing. Now, this is the same concept. There's a card with a different back and a different design, but it's in a box. So it's a card to box and dream card kind of hybrid trick, which is, you know, and that will give you, each of those tricks is just really solid. You know, you, people are going to be able to follow them and they are going to absolutely kill, I've got no doubt. And, and like I said, that's just a handful, but but I think that, that you're going to like all of these. So I always get a bit worried when there's like a whole half book or a whole book on gambling routines because they, they can get a little bit samey. And, and part of me thinks if you know a couple, then that will do. But with these, it, again, it made me look at it a little bit differently because yes, they're gambling routines, but they're all very different. And it isn't this endless poker dealing thing going on. Though there is a little bit of poker dealing in it, it's pretty strong stuff. So the first uh, trick in the gambling section is a poker dealing trick, but with a little bit of kicker where they choose what hand they want to win and then the hands change places between yours and theirs. So that's a that's a kind of unexpected twist on it. The any card at any number is given a whole new plot. Well, I don't know about brand new. I don't know if there's, it's been done before, but it, instead of you know just clicking your fingers and the card being at that number, you're saying that you're going to shuffle the pack and shuffle the card into that number, which gives it a little bit more logic. Um, now, Jason does say that that when he's seen any card in any number, he finds it very unmagical if you don't have a reason for it. I don't think that, I think it can be magical, but I think it, it is a bit of a magician thing sometimes. And we, we see it as the best trick ever and the lay people or non-magicians will see it not quite as strongly. So so he does give it a little bit of strength and I think he can you can give it strength with, with presentation. Um, Aces Anonymous is this really nice thing where somebody takes the aces, puts it in an envelope, the envelope is signed uh, by you, put it in an envelope and uh, in the in a wallet and they're holding the wallet. And, and then you find the aces in your deck that are signed by them and they open the wallet and the envelope now has has nothing in it, which is a really nice vanish. And it's going to maybe get a, make you get a wallet out of your drawer that you haven't used for ages because uh, he uses it really, really well. Uh, but my favourite, I think, in the gambling section was this cheaters routine because I love the visual aspect of it. You've got aces turning from uh, blue backs to red backs or red backs to blue backs. 
um, visually in front of the spectators when you put your glasses on they turn into a different bag you take them off and they turn into the other color which is a really nice use and it's, it can sound a bit naff if i'm describing it but actually when you read it it's got some lovely subtleties in there and he's like when i put my glasses on they turn into blue backs and of course everybody's seeing it happen so it's another really good use of a prop uh, and of course you can do the routine without the glasses if you want you know all, the, all these routines have scripts in them so you have the routine and then you have the script afterwards which is a nice idea and that also aids memory uh, but you know remember those scripts are for learning but don't go copy in every script. I know everybody says this and you know that I'm not, gonna, I'm not teaching you to suck eggs, but um, the scripts aren't there to copy. But what they do and what I do think is I think it's okay to copy at the beginning. You know, when you're trying to learn a routine, you know, take it out, not not if it's going to be in the public domain on stage and stuff, but if you're doing a close-up gig, I think it's all right to copy a script when you're in that learning bit, when you're trying to remember. And the minute you've totally got the, the moves down and you're doing it in your way, of course, um, then you know you can get rid of scripts and write your own stuff. But I think for confidence, these these scripts are they make sense. You can do them in your own way. You don't have to do them word for word. But but for your own confidence, they're they're a good tool. Uh, and then the comments after every trick are really valuable as well. So really really thorough. You've got everything you need to take these routines uh, and perform them. So it's not perfect, and it's not for everyone. Uh, the first thing is, like I said before, it's not a beginner's book. Uh, you're going to need to know your stuff to be able to do the routines. There are routines with second deals, bottom deals, not loads. Um, but to do the really good stuff, especially in the gambling section, uh, you are going to need a perfect faro shuffle. Now, this has been a killer for me for years. I've been struggling with the faro shuffle for so many years. And it's gotten, I think part of it was because I haven't really found routines that really would justify the work, even though I kind of I've tinkered with it. But but when I read this, I was away um, in Jersey over the last weekend. And I was reading this because I wanted to read the whole thing cover to cover. And, and with cards in hand, a lot of it as well. And it's just two a couple of routines. I was like, I've got to learn these routines. And they needed a perfect Farrow Shuffle. And you need a perfect. There's no kind of messing around with the odd one. It's got to be straight in there. So I thought, right, I'm going to do the purposeful practice thing and I'm going to sit and learn it properly. I don't mean when I'm watching the telly, just doing it, repeating myself, but actually looking. And I spent four hours straight doing this Farrow Shuffle and I kind of got it, which means it's probably 98% now, which is, and, and that, and the reason I've done it is reading this book. So like I said, you, if you don't, can't do all the stuff, still, if you're kind of nearly there, get it and it'll inspire you to learn that. Because we do need inspiration sometimes to learn, to spend the hours that we need to spend uh, learning these moves. So this is a very, very good magic book. I would say every single routine in this I want to learn. There hasn't been one routine where I've gone, you know, and, the, and even in books I love, you know, like, like Di Vernon books. I was reading the Di Vernon book the other day and I started learning a routine, a Larry Jennings routine in it. And I just got halfway through and just went, it's just not worth it. The, the effect wasn't good enough for the work you had to put in. And that's, that's not laziness, that's just being practical. Whereas you look at this and go, there, Every effect is is a good one. Like a doubt, like I said, like Darwin Ortiz, you're gonna you're gonna get your money's worth without a doubt. Now, a book is always an investment. It's not only an investment in money, and this isn't a cheap book. Uh, it's not super expensive, but it's it's not cheap because it's not a cheap. You know, it's a substantial book. It's got a lot in it, um, but it is gonna take time. And I do sometimes when I sit down and spend hours with a book and get halfway through and go, you know what, it's not worth it. But that's just not gonna happen with this. I'm gonna go and learn as much of this as I can. Um, because I'm not, I don't do that many routines. You know, I do kind of versions and quick versions and improvise a little bit. But I look at the routines in this and go, yeah, I can. I'm going to try that routine as he's done it because I can see the power in that. And that's and that's where that you can learn so much from these books, not just from the tricks, but actually from the routine and the thought that goes into it. And and Jason, you know, if you look on his Instagram, he's someone that cares deeply. He puts a lot of work even into his Instagram posts, into his videos. Um, so I, so I check all that out. He's someone that I'm. That I've, I've grown to, you know, this stuff's grown on me even more the more the more I read it and uh, the more I watch. So uh, it's, it's available from Vanishing Inc. So uh, vanishingink.co.uk or .com, obviously, if you're in the States. And highly recommended Game Changer uh, by Jason Ladani. Um, now, before we go, please, once more, like and subscribe. Have a look at cardmagiccourse.com where we do cover all of the moves uh, that you're going to need for this. If you want to learn them in depth um, and get any support, 
on that with the Slack channel and the, the Facebook group that we've got. I'll give you support wherever I can. So um, that's carmagiccourse.com. My name is Steve Faulkner. If you're watching this in real time or just after I've recorded it and put it out, have a brilliant, brilliant Christmas. I'll try and do a little bit over the holidays, but it will be a bit slower. Um, and do share if you can, because that's all lovely. But have a great one. Uh, enjoy the holidays. Take care.